This is Show Versus Business, where pop culture meets pop money. We host the real Theo Harvey and Mr. Benja. Oh, wrong way. With all the relevant information. Mr. Benja, what is going on with you, man? What are we going to get into today? Oh, man. This week, last week wasn't as like crazy with all this stuff. But this week, all of a sudden, the craziness is back. We got Tesla recalling all their cyber trucks. We got a uh, little news on Grimes. We got a little news on the Humane Pen. People are saying it shouldn't get, be getting reviewed badly. MBKWXR, what's his name? MKBHD Marcus has Brown. something to say about it. <laughs> yeah. But what's his name? Marcus Brownie. <laughs> Marcus Brownie. Yes. I, see, I don't even know his real name. I only know his gamer handle or whatever MKBHD is about. Uh, cool guy, though. Not to knock him. Anyway, we got the 2024 rap beef going off and some other music news we're going to throw in there probably. Yeah, Drake and the BBL diss and AI enters the the beef chat or however you want to call it. Interesting stuff we got to get to. Also, Netflix and A24, speaking of AI, they're getting in a little hot water from some people because they seem to be partaking in the AI pie and people don't like that. People don't like that. Adobe's all in on AI pie. Artists are mad about that. Everybody's mad except for the people using AI, basically. Fallout, live action. It's actually getting some good uh, good talk about it, good buzz about it. So we'll see about that. We'll see what it's doing. Maybe talk a little bit about the game from the past. See what's happening. And you know what? We may get to a couple of little things here and there. But that's the basic gist of it all. Theo, how does that sound? Mr. Benja, man, I'm super hyped this week. Oh, man. Mr. Benja, so much to go into for this week. But so I had the opportunity to actually sit in on Myron Golden and David Shands. Do you know the morning meetup, social proof? Yeah. And we talked about him before, previous on this pod. And then Myron Golden, that's uh, the guy here to Tampa that I've been swearing by for the last couple, well, about a year or so. And uh, so he's obviously out here in the streets promoting his new his upcoming uh, event here in Tampa. And it looks like he's got some big wigs coming in. So he brought David Shands in. So if you're local to Tampa, if you didn't know, he has a secret hideout place that you get invited to. He gets on the secret list and he'll let you know when he's doing a recording because he doesn't record like three times a week. And he likes to do them live like an old preacher, right? If you don't know, he speaks yeah. from the Bible a lot. So he's all, he likes the live audience, right? To kind of spur him on. So they did a live interview, man. It was pretty, pretty interesting just to see them in action so, and everything. So David Shands was showing up on Myron's platform or was Myron showing up on I, the morning meetup? Good point. I don't know. Or social proof. I think it's more a platform because David Shands is known for podcasting, right? That's just his thing. And David Shands shows up at in Tampa to do an interview with Myron Golden. So I'm assuming it's going to be under Myron Golden's umbrella, but you never know. David Shands might snip it pieces of it. Because obviously what's happening too is I'll talk about this in a second. I'll, I'm, I'm going to do some content about this, but I think it's going to be along the lines of watch what the goos do and not just what they say. So oh, I, oh, yeah, always. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, they have great content of what they say, but you're looking at what they're doing. So obviously Myron has a big event coming up. He's leveraging his context, David Shands being one of them. And David Shands, of course, now has his own referral link to get access to Myron's event. And so basically David Shands is probably going to promote it on his channels and everyone who pays to that channel, he'll get a percentage of that cut. So it just made sense for David Shands and Myron to do an interview together, right? <laughs> it's a win-win for both. Have you ever seen David Shands ask for a link? No, like, of he did. In, in his interviews and on the Social Proof podcast a lot, he's like, hey, we should set that up. Hey, let me get a link. Let me get a referral. I want some affiliate on that. Let me get a link. And the guy's like, well, if you don't really, it's like, oh, you, wait, no, I'll, I'll set it up. I'll do all the back end stuff for you. I, I'll set it up for you. I, just give me the link. Come on. It'll be like this slash social proof loves whatever their podcast is. And, and the, yeah. he's like strong arming people, but it's just funny how he does it. It makes sense, man. It's brilliant. And so, yeah, so I had a chance to ask a question in the live session. So you may hear my voice. I'm going to do some recording of it. But if you watch this live session, you'll hear, hey, Theo, go ahead. Unfortunately, I could not get on the camera. I was hoping to show up in the camera with my green, my green jacket that I know from my, from my presentation, <laughs> but couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So yeah, Master's it was jacket. interesting. Just, yeah, yeah. I have a green one, a pink one. I switch it up every now and then with a suit. 
when I do my shorts or when I do my uh, long forms for YouTube. So yeah, I, I had the team. I said, hey, look, you're just gonna have my face up there with David Shands and Myron Golden. And then you'll have me just ask a question and them saying my name a couple of times. So I'd like, say, yeah, we're gonna see how well this goes. So we're gonna roll with it. I'll let you know how, how it performs when we post it out there. But uh, yeah, so th that was just interesting to be at, at that level. I think at this time, I don't know how many David Shands has, but I know Myron Golden has 300, almost 400,000 subscribers on YouTube. So definitely uh, these guys are like at the highest level. And so I'm bringing this up because I started to do something interesting. So I started looking at everybody's YouTube channels and I do the click now to see you know, what they have when they say in their blurb, hey, this is about me talking to Myron Golden about Offer Mastery Live, blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, here's a link. And so I went through all these folks. I went through Ryan, Ryan, and then I think this one guy, Omari, God, how do you say his last name? But he's like the video department guy. He came from I Think Media. He has a podcast out. He had the guy from Alex Hormozzi show up, the behind the scenes guy. His name is Caleb. He does all their branding and he worked with Gary Vee for a bit. So I clicked on their link just to see what they were talking about. I said, oh, wow. They're talking about some good stuff about branding and how Alex Omozi and Layla Omozi do it and how to do it as an individual. So I click on their link. And so Omar, oh, Omar, excuse me, he has his link to like his video things. That, hey, if you want uh, to know what my video equipment is, here's a, here's a link. It's free, of course, but you got to sign up. And then, by the way, I got the course. So that's $97. Oh, by the way, I do. A, okay. Yeah, so he's got yeah. his stuff. But then what blew my mind was Caleb, because he did the interview, there was a little link in there that says, acquisition, you want to scale your business? Acquisition.com. I was like, Alex Hormoz, he's selling me something? I thought that was his whole brand. And so I clicked on it. Sure enough, you pay $5,000, you can go sit down with the master, Alex Hormoz, mm -hmm. in Vegas, and learn how to scale your business. I guess Alex is selling us something now. So I thought that was very fascinating to see how things have changed a little bit. His branding, he's not publicly saying anything like that. Again, yeah. watch what the gurus do, not just what they say. So I thought that was interesting. So yeah, so those are some of my high level action plans from the week and everything. But I did get a chance to, to read a little oh. thing from a becoming influencer. <laughs> they sent me something in the mail, Mr. Benjamin. Do you want to get into that? Let, let's let's jump into it. I because I will be trying to sell you something. <laughs> Unlike Hormozy. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Benjamin was kind enough to send me a preview copy of his latest book. Do you want to talk the name or do you just want to just talk in general about it? Or do you want to say okay, the name so, and everything? Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, give you a little introduction on it. So I am writing this book called jot booking and it started as a an exercise to get out a lot of my ideas as ideas were flowing i've been doing this for like the past i'll say 15 or so years back in game development so much information flying around i just started jotting down little things so i wouldn't have to think about them and after a while i realized i had a process going on because while a friend and i were working he said you seem to consume a lot of information and i was like I throw a lot of information out and I take a lot of information down and I realized I had a process that I go through. So I started mm -hmm. putting down that, that process of just jotting ideas down quickly. And I started that as a, uh, my launch off book for this new era that I'm going into with, which is leaning more heavily into the writing. And yes, that comes from what I was doing with social media and everything else. I was like, you know what? That book thing hasn't let go of me for a long time. So let me just go ahead. And I got into it. It got good. And I was getting shit from, from my, <laughs> from a PO and other people. So I was like, all right, let me send them a preview copy. Let them know I'm doing something. So that's it. <laughs> gotta yeah. get the book out. Gotta get, get the, the book out. <laughs> <laughs> he, put, he sent me a message in quotes to get it out. <laughs> just get it out i love oh, it man. man i love um, it so so yeah that's basically what it's about it sounds simple on its surface but i realized there was a lot to it so yeah it took up a whole book and yeah even if it's a uh, kind of weird not out of place i'd like to know your thoughts maybe not here or if you want i don't care <laughs> first of all mr bench i gotta tell you this has to be absolutely the very positive experience that when I read this event, this book, man, I, I, I really, obviously there's some little tidbits here and I maybe share with you offline, 
But I gotta say, Mr. Benji, you're onto something. I think uh, Russell Brunson talked about this being a creating a movement around your thoughts. And I think there's something here with job booking, right? You named it. You could absolutely create a fan base around this, right? And the more I thought about what you were trying to position here. And so I, I would love you to get into because I, when I read through it, I didn't see any of your other kind of frameworks you talked about. Sick. So I can. Sick, I would love to see yeah. some of that or some of the remarkable, right? See, I listen to you. Yeah. Putting some of those frameworks, <laughs> yeah. some of those other frameworks, because you could definitely be a thought leader here, right? In this space. Because I definitely someone who writes a lot of their thoughts down, I could resonate with that because if I don't write things down, I'll forget it. So a little, I'm talking to you sometimes and I do, I know you do the same. I'm like writing thoughts down. And so to have a framework to think about that and all the different ways you need to do it, I think is definitely something that is there. And I would just say the only other thing is being clear on who's it for. Is it more for entrepreneurs or just more creatives? I know it could be all those, maybe being a little bit more narrow and specific. And who is it really going to target, at least initially? And then what kind of outcome? Because yeah. I think you hinted at it too. There was a saying you said, I put it in parentheses. I think it was on page, let's see, it was pretty early on. And I said, oh, this could be a perfect subtitle. It says creating, so creating a productive and less cluttered mind. And I said, hmm, there's something there, right? Along the lines of creating a, a productive, and less cluttered mind in 90 days or 60 days as an entrepreneur or as a creative. What, what does that look like for you on the other side of that less cluttered mind, right? Would you like to have your thoughts cleaner, clear? So just give me a sense of the outcome I would get out of this because the, the insight is, is fire, but just making sure that outcome and that audience is very specific. And so I think that would be my high level kind of conversation. Of course, I got little small little tidbits here and there, but, uh, and I would love to see more of your, you in there. I know you sprinkle some thoughts in there around some. You told the story about this store that, that, that occupied your mind for decades and you finally stopped by to go visit it. And so I was like, what was the store? There was nothing special. I'm like, what was it? It was nothing special. It just got a little bit more descriptive in that. And then also some of your, you give some great examples at the beginning with your dad and the, and the, and the shopping center. And then your thoughts around being in a video game place, excuse me, working in the video game industry and learning from someone else. And then also your journey as an entrepreneur and art dealership. But I would love to get more insights how each of those categories from writing down your positive thoughts, right? About your negative thoughts, right? Maybe even the story at the beginning of how, you know, you've used it sure. to reflect those. So anyway, so that's some high level things. So hopefully you can tell. So hopefully you can tell I read it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Now, every, everybody who was listening should have been taking notes. That's how you drop some feedback. You can't tell if he, he loved it or hated it. He's just, hey, listen, tighten up the graphics on level three. <laughs> Do this over here. This, you could have added more. Boom, boom. See, this is how we do. This is how friends and fellow, I don't even, I don't even know what to call us in terms of the, the businesses, but what do they call them? Peers in the business or whatever. I don't know. Colleagues, but, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, man. We just make it flow and make it work. So that's awesome, man. No. So like I said, but ultimately, man, I think you have something here. I think this could be, I could absolutely see a course around this. People have done more, uh, what sold higher fees for less. Right. And so there's something here, there, right. And so you could just clearly define the outcome and the audience. I can absolutely see you just being bigger than just a book, because I think there's something here. Birdman hand rub. Birdman <laughs> hand rub. <laughs> you can have an app. You can have, you can do it all. Mr. so busy. You have a conference. Just yeah. you go, oh, yeah, job booking. Wow. Right. Everybody just like the frenzy. They don't know what they're yelling. They're just yelling, job booking, job booking. Totally. So, You're up on no. stage like a Tony Robbins getting everybody hyped up. I got to rewatch my Steve Ballmer, Microsoft keynotes yes. where I run across yeah. stage. Exactly. Yeah, man. So that's, 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 thank you for that, man. I appreciate it. So that is what I've been into for the past week. I've really just been going back and forth. And like you said, I think that part of that's why it's taken me this long. I started realizing that the, there was something bigger there. And if I can set this one up properly where it comes out, it'll be like, hey, this is the first one. And then the next one right after that, like you said, I am prepping for those other frameworks that I have. I'm just taking the time to realize that, oh, wow. Yeah, I did do that when I was thrown to the wolves in this game development situation and didn't know what to do. Here's what framework came out of that. And I really mm -hmm. haven't seen it expressed. So I'll be that guy. So 
Yeah, man. It's man I, and who does it, not to interrupt you, who does it well, right? Obviously, the guy you've been all all in, Dan Sullivan, right? All his yes. frameworks and books that he comes out with. And so it's it's of a piece, right? And and I think that's beautiful. And, and the other guy who's doing it well, I'm going to his stuff more, Daniel Priestley. He's phenomenal at it. And the way he set it up from not just the key person influence, he has a book on every one of his big ideas. And then he goes into detail why it's important. He has a book called 24 Assets. I just looked at recently where he said every business has 24 assets. And the more assets you have, the more income you make. And he went through each one and why it was important. Then he had, of course, the score app, right? Why that's important. So it's he'll create stuff, but then around that creation of that, that, that idea, he'll put products, collateral, and a bit in a book to highlight the importance of it. So he can, because really the key to business, I realized this, Mr. Bench, as I thought about more and more, is it's about be, how do you become a monopoly? Yes. And really a lot, and that's because when you become a, mono, a monopoly, you can make your own price and no one can judge you on what the fees should be or not be. And yeah. you do that multiple ways, right? You become a brand like Harmozy or bigger than, than what you're talking about. You create all this uh, perception of awards and prestige. Oh, you actually create something great like Steve Jobs that changes the world. But whatever it takes, you just have to become a brand. And the faster you can do that, then that's where all the, the that's where the market, that's where the profits are because people are not going back and forth on what the price is. They're like, oh, I can't judge this. I can't judge this another Apple. This is like a sumo Apple. I've never seen this before. And so I think that's what this is all about. How do you become it? I think, like I said, with this idea that you have and some of the other frameworks, I think you're along that path. That's something I want to get to as well, because I think that's the longevity of creating a, a brand and a business that, that sustains itself for the long term. Definitely. We, man, we got, we're going to be talking offline. Y'all, y'all ain't going to get like, to <laughs> we might have to open up a paid webinar for y'all to get in I on some of these talks. Uncut. We're going to have an uncut. <laughs> Chip versus business uncut. Good. That's my vision, man. We're gonna go, we're gonna go in, we're gonna cuss, we're gonna do it all. <laughs> Let's who's do that, it. Who's that eating potato chips on the Zoom call? Get off. You're, you're out. You're out <laughs> Secretary, refund him oh, his money. Get him out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, before we get into the heat of this week, you just reminded me of this. I found this group of people on threads that connected to Apple that are connected to Apple and Steve Jobs. And they started saying, no, no, you don't understand how different certain companies are just very different in the way they run things. And Apple is one of those companies. They had a discussion with one of their, one of their major people. And they said, how did Apple deal with finances? And they were like, oh, that's, it's a secondary thought where they start doing something. And for example, the app store. They mm -hmm. didn't run through a, they didn't run through a lot of, they didn't run through a lot of analysis and figuring out and talking with partners about pricing at 30%. They were just, Hey, we're doing an app store. And what's that kind of word? If you're an artist and you're doing this, that's like a 50, 50, sometimes it goes to 35, 65 split for the gallery owner. Okay. What's the commission like for this type of thing? That's usually mm -hmm. yeah, totally. 10, 25%. Yeah. How does this sound for an app though? Yeah, we're the platform. How's 30%? And they basically went with that because it worked for them. And they, in, in fact, I ended up on this because I was searching for note taking. I was thinking about job booking and stuff. They had a policy of not taking notes. Everybody would, yeah. they would, all the stuff was in their heads. And they said, if you don't know what you're talking about, then you don't need to be in this meeting. And everybody would talk and it would just be an honest discussion where you really had to listen and think and process with no note taking. So then everybody would leave the meeting and go about do their business. And some, if somebody came back to you later and was like, I thought you said, then obviously your statement wasn't clear. So you wow. had to be on your game and it was just hardcore. I'm sure notes were taken at like a lot of the smaller level things, but at a lot of the big important meetings and meetings where you're going to make a decision on a project. Yeah. No notes. Mm -hmm. It was just like no notes, no PowerPoints or anything like that. We just get in there, talk hardcore and make decisions. Well, that's funny. That's in, in Jackson's position with uh, Amazon, where you had to write a two page 
letter before you even came to the meeting. Everybody and everybody had to read it first. Exactly. And, and then you could talk. So it's I know, love culture is works. culture. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It doesn't matter. You can be successful in no matter what format. And, and and you know what? There's what eight billion people in the in the planet. So look, people can rock the way you rock and still be successful. Yeah. So you just gotta be the pie piper and find your audience. That's how I look at it now. <laughs> You've done that before, by the way. What's that? The the pie piper motion. <laughs> yeah, man. That's funny. it's so true. It's so true, man. It's more true now than it's ever been in our lifetime, man, because of social media. You're building a brand. I'm building a brand. It's slowly, but we're building it. And so you'd be surprised, let's say five, 10 years from now, how many people have followed us, listened to us, and just immersed in us. People just rock with you because they just rock with you, man. It's just, yeah. it's always been that way, but it's so much easier now to find the people you want to rock with. You can, can't explain why you like Dan Sullivan so much, right? <laughs> you just do. <laughs> yeah, weird, weird Canadian guy with a funny smile. You know, yeah. Exactly. So it's just what it is, man. But anyway, so I love Speaking it, Mr. Benja. It, Let's keep doing it. That's right. Speaking of what it is, how about what it is not? Right now, it is not the era of the cyber truck because they all getting recalled, every last one of them. I heard about this lightly, but you sent me the story, Theo. What's going on with Tesla? Yeah, Mr. Benja, this is something I thought was very interesting. This is Jackson Pazit. Ah, can't even say it. But basically, Tesla also fired a bunch of folks as well, <laughs> Elon. So it's a lot of things going on there with sales decreasing and things like that. But it looks like Tesla issued a recall for 3,878 Cybertrucks delivered to customers on his website. They didn't say that it was anything. They basically just said that it was an issue with, I guess they said, a faulty accelerated pedal. But it is very interesting to see them recall something that really was supposed to be really hyped out there and got so many people excited about because of the brand, right? The Tesla brand. So this just is further proof that maybe Elon's got too much on his plate right now and focused on this is, is this brand isn't what it used to be. And, and the stock market shows it, right? Tesla is down from his, definitely from his highs. It was a darling, right? During the pandemic. But now it's just definitely dying out right here when you look at the stock price and everything. So yeah, it's about 147 and what a year ago it was, what in the shoot in the two fifties. So it's down a hundred or so. So yeah, it's not doing right now, but yeah, Mr. Benjamin, what is this? What do you think? Is, is Tesla still going to be a strong electronic vehicle brand or EV brand going forward? Or what are your thoughts when you heard about this recall? It's interesting. I don't know. I don't know what the people are up to. Tesla brand is still strong with a lot of Tesla fans. And this era is much more accepting of faults with technology and something new. So I think a lot of the people who are Tesla fans, they're like, oh yeah, the accelerator pedal, it can pop off. It It's like a, it's really a small fix. It's just like the part of the pedal can come off. So if you're accelerating and slips or something, it's a it's oh, bad yeah. business to be on accelerator, but it's not, it's going to explode in a electrical ball of flames and take out a Seven Eleven. Okay. It's just, yeah, screw it back in. Basically. I would think that there are many bigger problems, like the fact that the trunk can really damage your fingers. They don't have safety precautions on the trunk like they should, but somehow, mm. yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't think it'll do much damage. I think it's one of those negative publicity things that could possibly be spun in back into, hey, look, wasn't that big of a deal. Let's go Cybertruck version two. They have best, they have best selling video games that shift and don't work day one. Mm -hmm. and, they just, and it's known that they don't work day one. But it's like, hey, when the patch shows up, it'll automatically be downloaded and you'll be playing before anybody else. Cool. Give me my copy. It's okay. That's where we are now. <laughs> yeah. The difference between a video game and a truck that's going to be driven on a highway. Yeah. Die. One can kill you instantly. And one, it's just a sucky game. So it's, hey. it's one of those things that just, you can't compare the two. But the power of brand, we talk about this on this podcast all the time. I was looking at Elon Musk's follower account. Obviously, he owns X or Twitter. But he's got over 180 million followers on, on X. 
And that means something. So when he speaks, people listen. And we saw all the shenanigans he gets into when something is out there. We know every thought he puts on X as soon as he thinks it, if he puts it out there. So he's also followed a lot. And so he can say things. So it's just this new brand of entrepreneur or high level entrepreneur who is almost like a Teflon Don, right? They can't, Trump is the same way. He came from the entrepreneur space, but he's untouchable. And so it's like, Things can happen to the brand and all that stuff. I don't think it's going to be something that substantially hinders Tesla. Like you said, is people are buying it just because, and because it's Tesla, he could come out with a pencil. He could come out with some new shoes. People will buy it. It doesn't matter. And we talked about this with Kanye did a what 30 second Super Bowl commercial on a yeah. grainy phone and sold out what 90, was it how many shoes? How many did he sell? 19 million? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah it's just... <laughs> it's, sheesh. Just like that. So anyway, so it's the power of the brand being a mon monopoly that way. Like I said, I think Tesla would be fine. They're just going through issues right now. I heard somebody at a grocery store talking about their Yeezy order. They said, dude, my order came in. Said, oh, really? Yeah, dude. When you got yours, I was pissed. But now I got mine. And they were like, oh. And they were being all loud in the aisle. So I was like, hmm. all right. Passed by the, the yogurt aisle. And you're like, what was that? Exactly. She, yeah. I love it. But yeah, it's a, but that marketing is a thing now. As I said before, uh, Zuck is doing a similar thing where he's out there. Hey, this is my life. And it's a little more planned. It's a little more chill and cleaned up. But you can tell that he's trying to get out there the same way that Trump, Ye, and Elon are. He's just trying to be out there as a face and everything. They put a little makeup on him. He doesn't look like a walking dead reject anymore. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, man. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Anything else on Tesla? Nah, man. I think we beat that to death. <laughs> but please be careful when you drive in your cyber truck. Please be careful. And you're slamming your foot on that accelerator. Don't let it wobble off. Get it screwed back in <laughs> professionally. <laughs> so yeah, man. Speaking of battles, we got some rap battles going on. Definitely. I don't even know where to start with this one because you usually don't jump into music too much, but I do stay on the scene. And uh, but you, you, I haven't stayed on the scene with this dis, with the year of the dissing. All of a sudden, people are dissing. J. Cole's dissing. Rick Ross, Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, it's it's out of control. What's going on, Theo? Mr. Benjamin, man. So the two things we're talking about this week: video games and music. I'm not the most prolific in both of them, but. It's just, I just love drama. And so I'm going to go deep dive <laughs> when something pops off. I so love drama. I learned the drama. So like I said, I, I can't recall every Kendrick Lamar verse. And, but luckily there are YouTube channels that go into detail, which one I sent you that goes into detail, every disc, every sub that uh, Kendrick and uh, Drake had over the years. So I didn't know there was this massive back and forth between them for years. So that was interesting. But it looks like it just really popped off recently for some reason. I don't know what was the inciting incident, but basically Drake and J. Cole. And then you had Ozzy Kendrick is still there, but then you had Future jump in, then you had a Rick Ross jump in. So it's just been a big fracas of old school rap battling. And we already know, but Drake's bona fides and his sensitivities. I sent you some of those videos. One that had me cracking up was just. Him getting all sad about Kendrick Lamar talking about he's the greatest rapper alive. He wanted to body everybody. And you saw Drake in his feelings about like, why he had to do that, man? He had to do that. <laughs> so it's just, he fed into that soft mentality that everybody just puts on him anyway. But embrace it, man. The best way to, what was Eminem's name? Was it B-Rabbit or something? And uh, 8 Mile, just embrace him. Yeah. And said, I am soft. I am weak. What can you say? Just go into it. Battle rap, man. Just tell them. Just eat that. But anyway, I, I digress. But anyway, so him and Kendrick going back and forth over and over. And then now this kind of escalated. But the funny part about this version of it is this the proliferation of AI now. The speed at which Drake is putting out some of the discs back out, there was already, there's already been things about him just using uh, ghostwriters for his stuff. But now the speed at, at how fast he's putting this uh, content out to go against Kendrick Lamar or Rick Ross, people are like, is this AI Drizzy out here <laughs> coming up with battle raps? As that's out there. And then what's happening too is the proliferation of, let's say someone says a line in like, for instance, Rick Ross talked about 
Drake's rumor, Drake's rumor of having cosmetic surgery and saying BBL, if you don't know what that is, basically butt lifts. And basically because of that line, someone did an AI version of BBL Drizzy and it went viral. So it's like, what is going on, man? You got AI yeah. in the battle rap and then you got people saying battle rap or rap. And then people taking it and making AI off of it. It's just getting bananas, Mr. Benjamin, when it comes to music. You're more of a music aficionado than I am. What are, what are your thoughts on all this craziness? I was waiting on something to come down the pipe. I've been seeing like rumblings of people doing things a little differently. I was waiting on, okay, what's coming down the pipe? What's, where are these little shifts going to take place? I didn't expect the J. Cole 20 versus 1 rap battle where he's just taking on everybody. And, oh, okay, Future, Rick Ross, Drake, what's his name, French Montana, Kendrick Lamar, The Weeknd, et cetera, et cetera. He's just been on this tear. Who's that, J. Cole? Yeah. What? But he's always been like that in the video I watched. You know, it looks like J. Cole's always been saying, hey, I'm body every rapper. But then he did the softest thing you ever do in battle rap. He went on stage and said, hey, guys, just squash all that, man. I don't want to. We don't want to do that no more. I was like, what? <laughs> I don't I don't know what that was about. Yeah, that's what was that about? Yeah. You never do that. <laughs> I don't know. Especially see, if you go like, hard like that for so many years. <laughs> it's amped up recently. Like it's like somebody said somebody needs to do something about that guy. And all of a sudden that guy turns it up even more. So mm -hmm. that's what's been happening recently. Cause yeah, there there are a lot more people. Big Sean too. Yeah, I remember he was out yeah. there, Meek Mill. Big Crit, Wale, Rocky, Tyler, the creator. I'm just finding a J Electronica. Yeah, he was, I don't know what's going on, but it's one of those things where you're like in the, it's like I felt with the middle of Game of Thrones where people were like, oh my gosh, they, he lost his sword and the sword was from made of Valerian steel. And that means he must've got it from one of the Targaryens. And then, but you got to remember they were killed and then they stole the dragon eggs. And I'm, okay, do I want to get into this Game of Thrones rap battle thing going on here? Or do I wait till it's all over and then just watch all the seasons all at once? That's, that's a I'm good, right that's now. a good analogy. That, that's a good analogy. Cause if you watch that YouTube video I sent you, that guy took it back to what, 2011. <laughs> it's just, woo. <laughs> and then every rap song that Drake or that even mentioned them, heck, I didn't even know there was a reference to, what was it, All the Stars from Black Panther soundtrack that Kendrick did? I didn't know that was a reference to Drake. To just after that, I was like, what? <laughs> it's, he's obviously that. talking about Drake here because he says this. I'm like, oh my God. So anyway, it's, look, man, it's the it artists, I get it. It's, yeah, it's artists, they have to, they, but just come out and say that you don't like the dude. Just say it. Just say, look, I don't like the dude. I don't like you, Drake. What, what did Tupac say, man? What did Tupac say? He said, F you, F everybody. Oh. What is that? Everybody you F with. It's just, just come straight out and say it, man. Be like Tupac, man. <laughs> just, <laughs> and everybody you F with. And he just went off. He just said, look, mama. F you and F everybody. Your mama and the whole whack ass crew. He just went off. <laughs> just say it, man. Just say what you mean. That's what you grew up on. Did you see how angry Lupe Fiasco got? No. There was a clip going around last week or late this week. I, I forgot how long ago it was, but uh, pretty recent. I had never seen Lupe Fiasco so angry. He was on stage with like multiple veins pulsating on his forehead. And he was just, oh, my life, dog. Oh, my life. If you ever come at me, I will come with the thunder. And he was just like screaming and neck veins bulging. Oh, I was like, man, I was like yo, it. Lupe, I thought you were that calm kid, but apparently he's not. He's, he must have been damaged in childhood for him to be this riled up. I'll send you the link, man. That was common. Yeah, man. please do. So anyway, man, AI is engaging, enraging folks for it. So what else is new? So it's, we'll see how, where this all goes. Cause I think AI is escalating this. If it is helping accelerate the responses and also making the responses a little bit more harder than it. it's like someone says something to you and they go, Ooh, it makes it worse yeah. when people respond. But now you got AI just constantly keeping that diss out there. So now Drake, 
I think he did respond, but he had to respond to this BBL this. So it is I what have, it is. I have found some funny images and funny videos that are made. And when you can do that quickly, uh, do you remember the, the Soldier Boy Ice-T video that came out? No. <laughs> when, when Ice-T said something about Soldier Boy released an animated kind of video. And back then, it was hilarious. Now you can do that with AI. I'm seeing a few images here and there of people looking crazy with AI. So it's on another level now. That's what I want to see. I want to see the image memes coming from all these people. Oh, yeah. I miss it, Benji. I'll be honest with you. Maybe we'll talk about another. I'm scared of this AI, man. It's getting to the point where I'm getting calls and you just, I don't know if you heard this called pig slaughtering, where people kind of trap you by reaching out via text messaging just randomly. And so I got a call yesterday from uh, one of my banks. And this, this lady called me and said, okay, so I need your social security number and all this. I said, hold up, wait a minute now. What you call her? You, I'm calling you back for calling me. So you tell me what you need. Send me a text or something. It's like, man, you got to be on your P's and Q's. And then I'm doing this man. Facebook ad. And every time someone says, oh, you're in violation. And it's coming from uh, facethebook.com. <laughs> so it's just like, face, you know, and this with three O's. <laughs> So this AI, man, I'm scared, man. When the election comes around, man, think about all the shenanigans. And this is, I'm pretty wise, but if I'm off just a little bit off my game, man, it could have got me a couple of times, man. So oh, it's, man. I say all this, say just AI and music is fun and, and funny, but like you said, the speed and almost like we talked about before, the image of the Pope and the fat goose, right? Everybody was like, oh, yeah. is that real? And so it's, it, it's going to get to that level, man, pretty quickly. And these AI companies are just putting more and more money into it. And we'll talk about later when we talk about Fallout. I think that's the that's why maybe Fallout is resonating a little bit more in the, the live action. Because capitalism run amok is really a theme of Fallout, the TV show. And I think we're seeing it now with AI. And we've seen it with social media. So anyway, that's my little tirade on AI right now. And no, it's a total thing. And... We'll come back, we may swing back around to this, but let's just go ahead and jump into Adobe. I don't know if you've seen this video. Adobe has made a new video update to Premiere. Now we know that Photoshop had their AI editions. We know Illustrator had their AI editions and some of their other products. Now Adobe Premiere, which is their video editing product, has these AI editions in it. And yo, Everyone talks about how the VFX industry is hiring, is doing bad to all these people. AI just came in and was like, oh, that's the guy? That's the guy? That's the guy that's hurt? And starts punching him in the side while he's down. Just kick a little more dirt on him. Because these tools that they've got, you could just run a video and then say, oh, look, we left, we left the Starbucks cup underneath the chair. Circle. It's gone. If there's like a, a box of diamonds, you open it up and there's a box of diamonds. They say, hey, let's redo that scene. Instead of diamonds, let's make it rubies. No, instead of rubies, let's make it pearls. You know what? Let's make it a joke. Instead of pearls, let's make it a ham sandwich. And they ran through all these examples. And it was like off a very small amount of footage, they redid the scene a bunch of times. And they're just on stage. This is the greatest thing ever. All you saw were artists mm. in the comments, filmmakers in the comments, VFX people in the comments, just trashing it. But it's one of those things where Adobe's like, sorry, guys, somebody's going to buy this. Somebody's going to use it. We good. Wow, man. Yeah, I'm reading this here. It says they have workflows powered by open Sora model, which we talked about before the text to image generator, but also runways Gen 2 model. And yep. Pika Labs model. So they're not just relying on open AI, but yeah, man, this stuff. And it, it was of a piece. I read this article. I didn't want to share it to you just long, but they talk about how a lot of people in Hollywood just fed up and they're leaving after the strikes. And that's why we're seeing our entertainment kind of change up a little bit. But a lot of these writers, they were already getting browbeat, but then the strikes and the AI stuff, a lot of them are, are leaving in, in mass because now, because we have IP that's, that everybody's, hey, if you create IP, we don't need writers anymore shit i know the story of the hulk i can write a story about the hulk and just have some ai or some writer assistant write it and so producers who put the packages together for these movies is i don't need a writer a, a high-end writer to write this for me now you're telling me i can get a high-end 
AI image generator to create the imaging for me. Why do I need a high end director? And so it's almost like you get to a point where it's like the Hollywood is just going to go so down that you can create these movies like this with just a producer who has the idea and really get some low level writer and director, just the basic stuff, maybe some talking heads. So for instance, another thing, I just saw that movie King Kong, uh, versus uh, Godzilla, the latest one, now that they're That's friends. Has- yeah, exactly. <laughs> King Kong I was, me and my kids were laughing because the actors, <laughs> the actors, man, they probably spent maybe two days filming their roles and every line they said was what? Exposition. So this is why King Kong likes this. This is, that's King Kong's friend. And this is the one that I was like, there was, it, they had one little arc about a mother and a daughter, but it was like, maybe, cause so, and, and, and get this, the daughter couldn't even speak. So it was all in sign language. So I guarantee they did not pay a writer for that, sh- that shot. The third act was just King Kong and the villain going after each other and Godzilla and his villain going, that, I'm serious. It was like a good 30 minutes of them destroying wow. Rio de Janeiro, Janeiro. There was no talking. It was just, I, I was watching a video game cutscene, 30 minutes on the big screen. Yeah. So I'm telling you, man, this is where our entertainment is going and it's frightening a little bit. Let's enjoy the stuff we have now. But man, when our kids 20 years from now, hey, dad, did you see that latest movie? But yeah, was any actors in it? I don't know. It was just some two boxes talking to each other. I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I suppose you actually, you looked at or at least checked out the Grand Theft Auto role play I sent you. I did not yet, but yeah, that's interesting too. Just sitting around in the video game, talking to your friends in a digital virtual world, basically. Is that the one? Basically. So basically you get 30, you and 30 friends together and you can all play in a virtual adventure. So what they have now is this thing called role playing where you basically have a quote unquote script in mind. And everybody gets in there and they play their role. It's like mm-hmm. LARPing. So you get online. Mm-hmm. It's you Digital LARPing. Friends. Okay. Yeah, you get online. It's you and your friend. Maybe you have teams or whatever. And the whole idea is that everybody is streaming, right? If they're mm-hmm. streaming, then other people are watching this adventure happen. So you have to, you don't have to, but you can make it like a story. Some groups take all of their stories and they edit them together later and put out a YouTube video after they've done it on Twitch or whatever. But basically I'm watching this one. I, yes, I actually spent about two hours watching this role play. The actual role play itself went on for 13 hours or something like that. Wow. But yeah, I, it started up and this girl streamer, she was like, guys, I don't know what to do. I think my cousin's in trouble and my boyfriend, he's missing. I can't find him. And she like gets in a car and drives around to a section of the world and jumps out. Hey, y'all. And she starts talking and she's like looking for her friend. Now, what I didn't realize at the time is that she's streaming, but these other people are streaming too. So they've got their own stories going on. And they're like, what you want? Hey, I'm looking for my cousin. Da, da, da. I ain't seen him. Hey, but have you, uh, have you seen this uh, red Cadillac? Somebody stole my Cadillac. And like, everybody's talking. I'm like, mm. what the hell is going on? Dude, this stuff was wild. Somebody starts to like break break character and everybody attacks them. Who are you? You ain't real. And they start beating them up. It's, oh my God, what, what is happening here? People are getting kidnapped and their people are crying and they're like hiding out in the game world. It's, but there's no like game to it. It's just people doing stuff. Role play, literally mm-hmm. playing dress up phenomenally interesting to me wow man this is where entertainment is going mr benjamin between this and the um, live action cupid dolls right making people do things for money yeah man can you believe we live in the dystopian future that we always watched on, on movies now isn't that crazy we are actually living in that time now remember they had those oh i'm gonna go to my my video game and play this or i gotta get paid on on internet doing this we live in yeah, that yeah. lifestyle now this is what it is. Yeah, you're right. I, I forgot about those old movies where somebody would do something and then you'd see the little credits pile up on the screen. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I got my virtual credits and it just, it seemed like a joke, but that's what we're doing now. That's Dang. what we're doing now, man. That we're in that future. It's 2024. We're 2025 next year, man. This is the future. Doesn't feel like it because I thought we had flying cars to be on the moon, but potato. 
<laughs> get some of it, some of you don't. In another reality, we probably are on the moon, but in this one that we live in, this experience, we're, we're, yeah. we're nowhere near that. And that's sad. So, <laughs> so, so real quick, I talked about Adobe. What's going on with Netflix and A24? Yeah, man, there was some shenanigans going on with people complaining about Netflix using imagery from some of their documentaries on their site. So basically it was, I think it was a new documentary and they had a fake or AI generated screenshot of the content and the artist got up and up for because it could tell it was fake by the fingers and the blurry background. And then A24 and the latest uh, Civil War uh, movie that just came out that went out pretty big. There was rumor they, they put some stuff out on TikTok, on Twitters and all that stuff about yeah, hey, it's attack on Chicago. So the the big claim to fame is, is the Civil War in America, and all these famous monuments are getting blown up. Right? They have an image of the Lincoln Memorial and the trailer mm -hmm. getting blown up. So they go to different sites, and then one place is the city, and I guess I forgot the name of the towers, but they were blown up. But they said, wait a minute, that's not really Chicago because the towers are closer together. They're not across the, you know the street like that. So people just panned them. So it goes to show you that Hollywood is still absolutely using AI at any chance they can get to save money. And right now we're, we're catching them on the product on the uh, promotion of the movies with posters and imagery. Cause there was another poster. What was that? Or remember the uh, intro to uh, secret war for, I know we all want to forget it, but for yeah, Marvel invasion. <laughs> secret invasion. Yeah. We all want to forget it, but that was all AI. So now these artists are like, just catch it. Oh, that's AI. But man, that's going to be a fool's gold soon enough because that stuff's going to get better. And, but it just goes to show you that I guarantee that some of these scripts are being written in AI. I guarantee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you start playing around in the gray area of what's a script, what's a yeah. treatment, what's an Here's outline. A treatment. What's a two page outline? Check it out. Yeah, I wrote it. I wrote it. I wrote it over the last two weeks. Check it out. <laughs> you, you look You're out a producer. Window. You look out your window from, from your Hollywood office and like, hey, hey, you, do you write? Uh, yeah, I got 20 bucks. Get up here. <laughs> All right, well, you know, I'll send you the article. For you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you this article. It's free to read. It's in Harper's Daily, but uh, so many layoffs right now in Hollywood. Matter of fact, there's a one young lady. I think you may have met uh, with her when we were out there one time. She was in the industry heavy. She was trying to be an actress and she switched to producing. She was actually up like a director level at Netflix. I don't think that's happening anymore. She's talking about she's in Atlanta starting a Caribbean restaurant. So I was like, sure, let's support you. <laughs> but <laughs> no, what what happened to your Hollywood dreams, man? You can look on her LinkedIn page. It's nothing but Hollywood jobs. So it's I think a lot of these jobs are just disappearing, man, because of the of the cost structure and producers and big big corporate America is really tampering down on what it means to produce this stuff at a reasonable price. And with automation, yeah. AI, all this stuff. Yeah, man. You know, people got to go. <laughs> hey, you, huh? Got to go. Yeah. yeah so speaking of corporate takeover, Mr. Bitcher, can we get into it right now? Can we get into it in the last little bit? <laughs> the oh, corporate takeover. Real, real quick. Did you see Grimes hit the stage? No, nah, I didn't see that. Did you hear about it? <laughs> I heard okay. about it. A lot of issues. Basically. She didn't know what she was doing. And when the set, she was on stage. I'll do this real quickly. She was on stage doing her music set. And Grimes is one of Elon's lady friends. So she was on stage doing her little DJ set. She tried to sync up the beat and use some function or whatever. And it didn't work out right. So people are always wondering what are DJs actually doing on stage? If the DJ is good what they are doing is controlling the music, the sound, the, the mixing, they're controlling all of this real time. That is the idea. And they're watching the visuals. They're changing things up. If somebody says something or does something, they can integrate it into the show. It's supposed to be a live show. It's not just supposed to be getting up there and pressing play. We found out what happens when someone gets up there and just decides to press play. There's, and some are debating whether it's a bug or not, or just the way the software works. But they're like, no, when you double the speed and that matches this, you can't jump back to the old speed. So what she tried to do was reset it. And she started complaining that it didn't work. And instead of continuing the show, 
she stops and goes, hold on, guys, let me fix this. And basically, blue screen of death herself on stage. And she's like, hold on, guys, this doesn't work. And everyone was like, wait, what? Stuff doesn't work all the time. You're, you're a DJ. You're supposed to be able to flip to the next song or do this or readjust the BPMs. It may sound weird for a second, but that's the point. If someone says they want to hear Manny Fresh, you're supposed to mix Manny Fresh into your music right then and there. If you don't have the track, someone's supposed to throw you a USB and plug it in right then and there. That's the whole point of this thing. And she just stood on stage and started complaining that the software had a bug in it. Bad business. Yeah. So yeah, there, yeah. Is hope, there is hope. There is hope. Not good look. Human performance. <laughs> not all AI. I love it. Good yeah. analogy. So yeah. So you know, in the interest of time, we'll move on to corporate takeover. When I mentioned that the Fallout TV show was released last week, this is based on the hit Fallout game series, right? That started in 1997 and they concluded, yeah. I think, in 20. 18 or 2019 will fall out at 76 and just evolved over the years for the last 20 or something years. I'm not a gamer, so I can just talk about a little bit about the TV show. I know you played the early versions of it and we could talk about it, but as a reviewer of this show, I thought I found it strangely compelling. Now, was it good? It had moments. I'm hearing, and maybe that's just the fanboys out there, the gamers out there. They're going, wow, this is the best thing since The Last of Us. This is awesome. But to me, I was like, it was just... I did. It was strangely compelling. It, it was a binge drop. So they dropped it on Amazon as a binge. But it was strangely, I, I was like, I don't know if it's good or not, but it's compelling. And that kind of drew me to the end. And I saw some interesting ideas in there. And one of the ideas that just popped up. So if you don't know the story about Fallout, basically is about the near future. Well, it's an alternate reality of America, right? And, and, and for instance, if we were all in our energy, and focus all our technical brilliance on fission and making that work, but we never developed anything else. So everything got stuck in the fifties for some reason. And so now there was this threat of nuclear war with some of our enemies. And so now you have corporations coming up with end of the world devices, technology to keep people safe. And one of that is vault tech. And that's about creating these big vaults that people live in to survive a nuclear fallout, if you will. So that's the premise of the game system and all that from my understanding. And this TV show, for someone who watches a TV show, I just found it compelling because it was the it was a mix between very gory, very dramatic, and then very funny. And it was it almost worked a little bit. And so I thought it was interesting to watch this kind of mixed concoction and also some, I guess, nostalgia thrown in of those who played the fanboy stuff, the boys who played so, the game. So compelling on the execution or compelling on the type and style of content if that makes any sense yeah both compelling on execution just wow how did this is like amazon put some money in this thing and then number two on the themes of just what it means to, to survive and what does corporate run amok mean as someone who's played the games mr Benj, i mean what did you like about the games and is this a series that oh rumor is too this is after the game so this is unlike the last of us which was basically tabula rosa basically took directly from the game and just wrote it out. This is totally separate. It's the world of the games. So basically it's a continuation and can absolutely be canon for the future games, which is amazing to me. what did you think of the Fallout games as someone who's played them? Did you enjoy it? Did you like them? What were your thoughts? I, I, I really liked them. This was a, definitely a breath of irradiated air that kind of just stuck with you. And it was good because you had all the, your, your fantasy RPGs, you had your swords and sorcerers rpgs and i was like okay that's old hat right now but they went in a mm -hmm. different direction and in such a way that you really couldn't repeat it and it just maintained its own vibe and i really loved it for that yeah it was definitely it definitely has a different unique the music is different it's, it's this mix of retro with future horror versus satire it's just a weird mix and that's maybe what made it compelling they picked up, you ever heard of Walter Goggins? He played Justified. I don't know if you watched that show, but he plays a very compelling kind of villain, pseudo, you know, anti-hero, the gunslinger of the will. And it's written by your boy. It was directed, not written, but executive produced by your people, man. The folks that made Westworld. Oh, John I'm Nolan. 
I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fell out of Westworld, so I don't know how well, but I think I'm I'm encouraged because they didn't write this, and they have actually the uh, creator of Fallout coming in to write it. So hopefully, it's not going to be an uh, show that, in my opinion, that's what happened with Westworld. So yeah, so go check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Anything else, Mister Benja? I got nothing else. All right, everyone. We're going to end it here. Hope you enjoyed it. Like always, please like, subscribe, and comment at Show Versus Business on X, YouTube, and Instagram. Listen to us at Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And you want to check us out, go check our website, Show Versus Business, where we get into more information and a lot of other details. Hey, Mr. Benja, have a great one. Peace.